He's a cop, she's a crook. Together they're law and disorder. What is a comic filter? Comic filter is a character's way of viewing reality different from what reality really is. A strong comic character has an identifiable and consistent comic filter. Strong in the sense that it's completely uncompromising. I think about everything this way. Uh, examples abound. Let's, let's, uh, uh, here's, here's one I, I teach from. Uh, he's a cop, she's a crook. Together they're law and disorder. <laughs> His comic filter is law and order. He's a cop, he wants to do the right thing. In all situations, he's gonna do the right thing. Her comic filter is break the rules. I'm gonna do the wrong thing. I'm, I'm a free spirit, I'm an outlaw, I'm a rebel, I'm an anarchist. The world is good when the rules are broken. So now you have one character whose comic filter is obey the rules. And you have another character whose comic filter is break the rules. You put those two characters together and give them strong comic filters. They're gonna fight forever over who gets to be right. And this is the heart and soul of a sitcom. This is how you build two-hander sitcoms, what they call comic opposites in sitcom. You take a comic filter, exaggerate it to the end, and then pit it against a similar, uh, an opposite comic filter and have them go to war. Then, if you're looking for stories, you can just look at any situation and ask, how will this character filter this reality through his or her comic filter? The example that I use now, it's a little outdated because it involves stolen pirated DVDs, which don't exist anymore. <laughs> but let's just imagine that she brings home a box of pirated DVDs, but it's DVDs that he really wants to see. Like it's the hot new movies. What a nice moral dilemma for him because he knows he's breaking the rules if he watches right. the DVDs, but he's drawn. He wants to. He has inner conflict. I want to follow the rules, but I want to watch the DVD. That's the story. And resolving that conflict is the end of that story. I don't know how it'll end. I have a feeling that he's going to end up watching those DVDs, but somehow disavow them. I wasn't breaking the rules according to my own terms so that I can still feel good about my comic filter going forward. Right, maybe she got them at the swap meet and then he needs to watch them so he can make sure that the entire thing was pirated. And then he's gonna go back and, and, and that, report to wherever. Wow, well, I, I, I feel like you and I could <laughs> work effectively because you, you have this knack for taking an idea and yes, anding it to something. Your, your what if tool is working quite well. Thank you. And especially because, oh yeah, I, I can see that. What he's doing on a psychological level is creating a rationalization. Now, it might be my job in our creative partnership to shine a light on what's happening and then your job to make it funny, or the other way around, or maybe we change roles, but that's the way this collaboration is working. Because I'm saying, it's funny because he's got these DVDs and he has conflict. And then you're saying, well, based on that conflict, he might try this strategy. And then I'm saying, that strategy reflects this state of mind, this psychology, rationalization. And then I'm gonna say, let's make the bad situation worse, let's make that strategy not work. How can we, how can we block him from his piece of watching the video and not feeling bad. Class. Ah, well, uh, maybe his supervisor calls him. And so now he feels a little bit torn because now. Sure, there's his, su his supervisor or somebody says, you can't do that. that, that way is not allowed. Right. Or maybe she says, that's a cheap rationalization if I ever saw one. You can do it if you want to. I won't feel bad. I want you to watch the movie. Right. But he'll say, no, no, I can't give her the satisfaction. I can't let her win. This is something we find over and over again when comic filters go to war with each other. The, the, the main motivation that every character has is I can't let them win. I have to win. That's what makes strong comic characters. Going back to Kramer. If Kramer doesn't win, he's not happy. And because he has this strong comic filter, it kind of gives him superpowers. And he can use the superpowers to win in situations where you and I couldn't win. It, it, we talk about comic filters, but it's also useful to talk about superpowers, comic superpowers, because if a character has a strong comic filter, that character will do things that you and I can't do. That character has permission. A, a great example of this is uh, crossing against a red light. Normal people 
will cross against a red light. They won't, they won't do it. They'll wait for the light to turn green. Two classes of people will cross against the red light with consistency. One whose comic filter is, I don't know the rules. And another whose comic filter is, the rules don't apply to me. Both of those characters will cross against the light. They will achieve a goal that normal people can't achieve because they filter reality through their comic filter. Sure. Yeah, I've seen a lot of that's that's a great because there's certain people that are like these car dodgers and they just they feel it's their just right to be it doesn't matter if it's the cars are stopped, but they feel like this is my universe as well and I'm going to sure. saunter through and you'll stop for me. It's you the know? cliche, it's the cliche of the New Yorker. <laughs> I'm walking say, here. Who is that? Yeah. That's from Dustin Hoffman in Midnight Cowboy, I believe. Okay. He, mm -hmm. He's crossing the street right. in New York saying, I'm walking here, I'm walking here. <laughs> How does a writer build a comic filter? I start by looking within and asking myself, what comic filters do I have? We've already determined that I'm playful. I'm inquisitive. I have curiosity. I avoid conflict. I like to exercise. Let's take that last one. Now I know something that's true about myself. I like to exercise. Now all I have to do is exaggerate it. What is the most extreme example of someone who likes to exercise? Someone who can't stop running no matter what. Believes that all sports are great, all sporting activities are valid, and nothing else in the world is worth doing. Now we have a strong comic filter made strong by exaggeration. So how do you make a comic? How do you build a comic, fi comic filter? Take normal reality and exaggerate it until it becomes comic reality. It's the same thing in creating a comic premise. The comic filter is the comic premise of the character. It's the way the character differs from real reality. Right now I'm thinking about the character in about, no, up Schitt's Creek, the Eugene Levy character who just thinks he's gonna go to this small town and everything's gonna be completely fine and cool. And his comic reality is I can cope, but real reality fights against that. And his comic reality creates the comic premise city guy in the country because he's driven to prove himself in that new environment. I haven't seen the show. I want to see it. So it sounds like he still has his city sensibilities about him. Uh, other characters in the, in the character map have their city sensibilities, as you would imagine. But let's just take a different example. Let's look at Sheldon Cooper in Big Bang Theory. His comic filter is I'm better than everyone. His superpower, because he has that comic filter, is he can do things normal people can't do. He can use his arrogance to achieve his outcomes. The reality that he lives in is Sheldon Cooper world. It's not our reality. We wouldn't put up with him. But because his comic filter is so strong, it creates the comic premise that this guy can fruitfully exist in this world. He wouldn't last five minutes in the real world. He'd be unhappy. But in this world, he can find happiness because he has this superpower all of which requires that we look at it from underneath with psychological tools and from above it with awareness and from the audience's perspective and all these other different angles. People think that the, the idea is developed and then it's done. A better way to think about it is when you're pursuing a creative outcome, you're like a detective who is simultaneously creating clues and following them. The more clues you create, the more effectively you can follow and the more effectively you follow, the more discoveries you make. The more discoveries you make, the more clues you surface. And the more clues you surface, the more you succeed in moving toward your goal. Should someone know their own comic filter? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Is that the first? As a starting point. That's the starting point. As a starting point. What do I think is funny? And the way to think about it is this. When your friends say you're funny, what do they mean? This is, I'm, I'm now speaking to people who would be in my comic toolbox master class. They're there because they want to be more funny than they are. So they have some, they're interested in comedy. Somewhere along the way, somebody told them they were funny about something. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here. Or they thought they were funny. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here. So what brought them here? What sensibility do they have walking into the room that needs to be discovered and nurtured and expanded and exaggerated so that it becomes a comic filter that's a platform upon which their work can stand? I've had people say, I'm clumsy. People know that I'm clumsy, as an example. Where are you funny? I'm funny when I'm clumsy. Okay, in the real world, you're gonna try not to be clumsy because you could get hurt. In the comic world, you can be as clumsy as you want. Your comic premise is, I can be clumsy and not get hurt. 
and now you're off and running. You can take that anywhere you want. You can build a platform for stand-up comedy routine, or you can endow that attitude on a character in a sitcom or a comic movie or a play or comic novel. It's a building block. It's not the end of the story, but it's a piece of the puzzle. Hence Kramer. You know, Hence Kramer. It, it, but he always lands on his feet. Always lands on his feet, and, and it's built into the character. So when we think about comic filter, we're also thinking about something right next door called controlling idea. The comic filter is, this is how the character will be funny, because he's always clumsy. But the controlling idea is, I'm not clumsy. I'm, I'm elegant. I'm, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? I'm, uh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, not, Syn am, not ambidextrous. Siri, give me some synonyms for clumsy, <laughs> for deft. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. His, his controlling idea is, I'm going to prove to the world how cool and smooth I am. His comic filter is, I'm clumsy, and those two things fight against each other in an interesting way. And that's what makes the character interesting. When his comic filter is one thing and his controlling idea fights against it, you have automatic inner conflict. Jack Tripper, Three's Company, yep. What a great, thank you. I was trying to think of an example. Jack Tripper, whose comic filter is, women love me. Right. And who's, <laughs> no, who's, who's and his, well, I, get this, I guess I have this wrong. His comic filter is, I'm no good with women. But his controlling idea is, I'm great with women. 